Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So I got the opportunity to do something absolutely incredible recently and that is to fulfil a lifelong dream and to study physics, or more specifically cosmology, at the University of Cambridge. I wanted to share my adventure with you as you may be wanting to take on the Summer Science Programme course yourself or you may just want to know what it's like to be a student at Cambridge University. Um, so either way, welcome to the vlog. So before we start, I just wanted to say that I'm not in any way affiliated with or sponsored by the University of Cambridge. Um, these are my own honest and personal views and opinions. Enjoy. My story began just before Christmas, where I was looking online at various master's programmes for the future. And whilst I was on the homepage of the University of Cambridge, I noticed a little icon that said they do summer programmes. So I clicked on, was super interested. It turns out they do plenty of courses run by the ICE, or Institute of Continuing Education in Cambridge, and they do a ton of different topics, so naturally I gravitated towards science, but you could choose like medieval studies, nutrition, creative writing, there are lots and lots of things on offer. So as well as having lots of general courses to choose from, there are options within each field. So for example, in science, not only was there a physics option, but there were things you could have chosen if you were a student of biology or chemistry. I opted to go for the physics, which this year was cosmology, exploring galaxies from the Milky Way to the cosmic web. Uh, I just did the first week, but the second week was about quantum puzzles and quantum mechanics. The first day I got there was a Sunday, and it wasn't actually a day of lectures or anything like that, it was just about registering. So I went to the Sidrick site and to Lady Mitchell Hall to register on my course. So you go along, you bring ID, if, there's lots of international students as well, so it's about checking their visas etc. So you turn up, give your details, and you receive a welcome pack. So I've got a couple of the items here to show you as well. So you receive your welcome pack, get yourself checked onto the relevant course, and then you head over to a lecture hall. Um, and here they have, had a PowerPoint presentation as well. So it just explained a little bit about the contents of the pack. It just said how it all works, what to do, how to be evaluated, and things like that. So one of the first items you get in your welcome pack is this sweet little University of Cambridge notepad. I just thought it was really, really cute. So it's in the colour of the uh, University of Cambridge. It's got a nice little logo. I use this during the course to take all of my notes. So you can see here I've got absolutely like tons and tons of things written on here. Um, so I used it for my course notes, but I've left a little bit of space for if I go again, or if I want to do extra notes on there. Um, so it's really, really big, plenty of space, it's all lined. Um, and what I liked as well, it's even got like a little pouch at the back, so you can put any inserts and things there as well. So this is another item from the welcome pack. It is my science summer programme timetable. With some really happy looking meerkats on the front there. So this was great. So whilst you can absolutely access a timetable on the website, so when you join up, you can actually access like a little web portal, which has got the materials you need. It was really handy just to keep one in my bag, just for really quick reference. And in a couple of the old lecture theatres where you have to like go to a ground floor, etc., there wasn't any Wi-Fi. So it's really, really handy to keep this on you. As well as being a timetable, there's some really great information in here. So we have the Summer Science Programme Directors, a list of people to turn to, etc. Um, some extra information, so you can find details about like evaluation and the programmes office and weekend excursions that they offer, but more so for international students. Um, just some general information as well, so you can find this all on your online handbook, but again it's just nice to have. This was my timetable for week one, so I'll be talking you through a little bit what the classes were like. You can see there, like I said, Sunday was just about a reception. So there is actually a drinks reception you could go to. So I actually didn't because I didn't choose to have accommodation with the Uni of Cambridge. I chose to travel with family and find my own arrangements. But I just think that's a really nice idea for people who are staying there for the week. Once I'd registered and received my welcome pack and been to the lecture, I decided to take a bit of a walk around the campus grounds as well. So I've put a few clips in so you can see and imagine what it was like. As you can see from one of the clips, the weather was truly, truly British that day. Another thing I absolutely loved about the Summer Science Programme is its interdisciplinary approach. So I'm sometimes a little bit guilty of only liking physics and sort of dismissing biology and other topics, but the way it's set up really helps broaden your horizons. So for the bulk of each day, so across the lunchtime, you do the topic that you went there to study. In the morning though, you do something called a plenary lecture. So a lecture that is a subject that isn't necessarily yours. These were the lectures that I was most uncertain about. I was a little bit nervous that I wouldn't understand and I was a little bit nervous that I wouldn't be that engaged by them. Um, however, so whilst physics was my favourite, of course it was, I was pleasantly surprised with how amazing they were. So I just thought I'd show you on my cute little meerkat timetable the courses I did while there. So I don't know in the future if you go with there whether they'll do these exact courses, but it gives you a really good idea of just how broad the week really is. On the first day we did You and Your Genome by Dr Martin Welsh. 
Now, I have to hold my hands up and be honest here, uh, this is the course that I was least looking forward to. Biology has always been the science that I've least liked, it's always been the one I found the most difficult and perhaps had the lowest grades in. Um, what I know about biology, I could truly fit on the back of a postage stamp. So, I didn't really have high hopes for this one, but it turned out to be one of my favourites of the whole week. So it was delivered by Dr Martin Welsh, who's a senior lecturer in microbiology in Cambridge, and the way that he lectured and brought the information alive was really, really great. It was on a level that I could understand, just about. I mean, there was a few bits about proteins that I was a bit shaky on, um, but I genuinely left that lecture. I mean, it was an hour and 15 minutes long, and I was a bit dreading it, um, but I genuinely left there feeling full of hope, and one of my geneticist friends, I feel like I could have a bit of a conversation. Not much, but a bit of a conversation with. On the second day, we had super tall timber in possibly high wooden skyscrapers, so a talk by Michael Ramage. So again, architecture and engineering isn't necessarily my forte, but it was really good just and interesting to hear about how wood could be used a bit more in the future to construct buildings. So it was talking about the economical impact, the environmental impact, etc. So again, not my forte, but super useful. Day three became a little bit different. So we had a speech by Charlotte Connolly, who is the museum curator at the Polar Museum, which we got to go to and I'll tell you about later. Um, she talked to us about climate and the poles, a long view. So I like this because it changed it up a little bit. So it wasn't actually a science lecture. It was almost like a story time. So it was the history of science. So she was telling us a little bit about the poles and talked to us about the story of Captain Scott and various other explorers. So again, in my normal study, in my normal line of work, I wouldn't ever really come across anything like that. And I found the whole thing really exciting. Day four was really useful. So I have genuinely never ever studied geology. We did geography in high school but I didn't pick the geology option. So when we had the speech predicting volcanic eruptions, a progress report from Iceland by Dr John McLennan, so he works in the earth sciences department in Cambridge, I was over the moon because I thought what a great great way to have an introduction to the science than having a lecture here in Cambridge. Um, so it was really, really great. He had a wonderful PowerPoint presentation. Pictures really helped me, so a complete and utter noob, um, really helped me imagine the different layers of the earth and how volcanoes are made. So I kind of, I think if quizzed, I'd only sort of know, but it's a lot more information than I had before. Day five was one on the timetable that I just thought was the most random thing in the whole world. I wasn't sure what to expect, whether I was gonna like it. Uh, so day five was The Naked Bull Rat, Blind and Naked but Oh So Cool by Dr Ewan St John Smith who works in the Department of Pharmacology in uh, Cambridge and as I said this is one that I thought I don't really know what a naked bull rat is, I don't really know what I'd ever do in the future with that information but this is probably the course that I've spoken about the absolute most since coming back. Um, so The Naked Mole Rat is actually a very interesting little creature. So it may be absolutely ugly as sin, um, I won't repeat what I thought it looked like. Um, it has some genuinely interesting things about it. So for example, it's the only cold-blooded mammal they've ever discovered. It seems to be super resistant to cancer. So rather than mice that have a 70% cancer rate, there are only a couple that have ever been found to have cancer. So they're using that information to see how it can be applied and how it can help the human race try and battle cancer. Um, which again, I just thought was super duper interesting. These little rats as well can withstand heat. They're resistant to pain. They, um, you can put them in a pH of up to 3.5 acid and they won't really complain. Um, so whilst it's not anything that I don't think will ever help me in a physics paper in the, with the future, it might definitely help in a pub quiz. Who knows? Either way, really enjoyed it. If you've watched any of my previous videos, or if you've ever met me, um, then you should know I'm a physics student, so it should come as absolutely no surprise that my favourite part of the week was the crux of the day, which was my exploring galaxies from the Milky Way to the Cosmic Web Session. I absolutely lucked out with my lecture this year, she was absolutely phenomenal. I have somebody called Dr Judith Croston to thank for my wonderful time at Cambridge. So this is a lady who used to work for the ICE, Institute of Continuing Education in Cambridge, um, but now actually works for the Open University. Whilst I was there, Judith was kind enough to agree to do an interview with me. So for my next video, which I will put a link up to here somewhere or here when it's ready, um, we did some footage regarding an interview about women in physics. So I'm really excited about that and that, as I said, will be the next video. Um, I've just popped here some of the topics that we've covered. So we did an introduction to galaxies. We talked about our Milky Way galaxy and then some other nearby galaxies. We did um, different formats of things that you find in the universe, from the ordinary to the exotic. Um, we did about the observation of galaxies, so that's something that Judith's really heavily involved in, which is radio astronomy. Um, and then we went to galaxies in general on the cosmic web. So I've chosen as well as part of this to be evaluated. When you start the course, you have a list of five different questions you can do. Um, so for some international and other students, it meant that you can actually get credit for your home institution, um, or people can just do it for 
fun, um, yes, people might like me, this is actually fun, um, or you can do it just to see how your essays stack up against the Cambridge marking system, which is known to be kind of, you know, obviously the highest level you can get and pretty harsh. Um, so for myself, it was originally going to be for credit, but I think I'm just going to stick to my own modules, but I still completed the essay. Um, so for me, it's just around how do my essays stack up? How does it stack up against the Cambridge standard? So I'm really, really, really intrigued to see how I've done with that. During the course there are different excursions that you can do, so if you're travelling to Cambridge from say America or Australia or China as a lot of the students were from, then you can do like different walking tours, you can go punting, um, as I've said before I was there with my family and I've already been to Cambridge a couple of times so we kind of done the touristy things, um, but what's part of the course are two separate trips, so on one of the days in the afternoon we went to the Whipple Museum, so it's an absolutely fantastic museum with all different scientific instruments. You've got like telescopes, globes, microscopes from hundreds of years ago. I saw some really exotic things like an orrery, um, which I'd never really seen before. So that was really, really worthwhile. And if you're in Cambridge, go check it out. I said to you earlier that as part of a plenary lecture, we had a speech from Charlotte Connolly, who worked in the Polar Institute. So we actually managed to go to the Polar Museum. And again, that was really good. I have got some pictures here. Uh, we got to dress up in some Arctic clothing. Um, and regarding Antarctica as well, it's not really a place that I ever kind of thought about. We had two different talks about Antarctica. So the first one by Charlotte Connolly, which was just around the history of it all. And the second one, which formed part of an afternoon lecture, um, just absolutely blew me away. So a lady came on and was like, hey guys, I'm Jane. She was just, she seemed like quite ordinary, quite casual. Um, and she started talking about Antarctica and it was just incredible. She was like the Beyonce of the lecture world. She just had a way of captivating her audience and shot out lots of facts, had some amazing pictures. So for instance, I didn't realize that Antarctica was once part of a tropical land as it was linked to Australia and so it was very, very warm blown away. Um, I didn't realise that some of the ice sheets in Antarctica, like in the mountainous regions, are up to four kilometres deep. So what scientists have done, as with this lady's kind of group, is they can drill and take a core, so like a cylindrical sample, around about a kilometre deep. Um, and when they pull that back out, they can see what, well, they can tell lots of different bits of information from that piece of ice. So if you imagine that air got trapped like millions of years ago, when we go and grab it and take a core out now, it tells a story. So you can tell, for example, what the CO2 level was like, and the sea levels, and the temperature. So geophysics isn't really something I've ever done, um, but I found the whole lecture fascinating. And at the end, one of the gentlemen, who I think was one of the science directors, um, said thank you very much off stage, and was like, you know, I am gonna, I'm not just going to call you Jane, I am going to refer to you by your proper title. Professor Dame Jane Francis, Director of the British Antarctic Survey. Um, so it kind of all made sense as to why the lecture was so good and so engaging and so factual etc. It's because she is an absolute genius. It turns out that the team who works in Antarctica as well, um, back in 1985, so her and her team, discovered the hole in the ozone layer. So she's a, bit, a little bit like science royalty. Um, and I did actually think she kind of looked familiar. It turns out that BBC Horizon did a programme about the Halley, like the centre in which they live and study and do experiments etc. Um, there's a programme about that a few months ago, so really worthwhile, go check it out, about how there became a crack in the ice shelf that was a bit unpredictable, it was sort of growing at a rate of knots, and they had to move this entire centre that's worth billions of pounds, dollars, whichever is your preference, across an ice sheet and to safety. So definitely worth checking out, but yeah, that one, that's just one of the courses I didn't mention earlier that absolutely blew me away, because the level of it was fantastic. To summarise my experience in Cambridge, I had one of the best weeks I've ever, ever had. Um, I just think it was one of my lifelong dreams. I already fell in love with the city of Cambridge a few years ago when I first went there, but to get the opportunity to be within like the different campuses and lecture theatres and to speak to lecturers and be surrounded by people who have got like the most fantastic minds, it was just incredible. I mean, you can completely see why Cambridge just churn out so many Nobel laureates. The environment that you're in is just so academically enriched. I mean, whilst there I had so many thoughts and different questions, I understood concepts I've never understood before, because no matter where you go, even if it's just for like glass of wine in the evening, you just overhear things and see things that just really, really shape your mind. Um, so I felt a lot more sort of like mentally sharp and just with it while there. So I'm really hoping to go again next year. If you're interested in going, if you have a look, I think it's around about December time, so like late December, they post things on the website, so it should tell you what the class is gonna be like for um, July and August 2018. So if you're interested, please check that out. As far as who can apply, so I believe it's like students, professionals, people who are kind of in that arena somehow. So for science, it would be people who are involved in that um, and for literature, etc. I'd imagine it'd be the same, but it's definitely worth checking out and well, well worth the money.
if you are an international student, there's absolutely plenty on offer for you. So not only do you get to study in one of the world's most prestigious universities, but they put on plenty of trips. So there's activities in the evening, there's different like folk festivals you can go to. They put on a cinema event over in Maddingley Hall. I went to that. They did a screening of the theory of everything and they had the guy who was the, um, the scientist that was kind of like the consultant for the actual movie itself. Um, so it's about the life of Stephen Hawking, the theory of everything. We got to watch that and it was a beautiful summer's night, or it did rain really quickly, but generally a beautiful summer's night. So yeah, so if you're an international student, not only do you get the benefit of the courses themselves, but they've done it so that there's plenty to do in the afternoons and evenings, you'll make loads and loads of friends, and it comes highly recommended by me. The greatest advantages of taking part in the Summer Science Programme is not only that you get to spend time in an absolutely beautiful city in the UK, but you get access to the best materials, lecturers, etc. in the entire world. Um, you'll review topics that aren't necessarily your own, so you'll get more of a, like a broader appreciation of science. You'll do visits to different science institutions, so I went to see a museum um, and also a polar institute. Um, and I just feel like you get to meet people who are like-minded, you make friends, and it's just well, well worth the money. The only disadvantage I can see is that the um, accommodation is really expensive. I think they're asking something like over a £1,000 to stay in the halls there, um, which for international students with the current exchange rate not be a big, may not be a big thing. Um, but just for me, I did Airbnb and I stayed in a beautiful cottage for far, 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 far fewer pounds and I had an absolutely great time. So that's it for me. Thank you so, so much, guys, for watching. If you did want to see more videos like this or hear about my study journey, then you can subscribe below. Um, if you wanted to go ahead and give the video a like, that would be absolutely wonderful as well. Um, on my channel, I normally do plenty of videos to do with the Open University who I'm with, my physics degree. I do various challenges, etc. Um, so hopefully see you again soon. But I hope that gave you a really good introduction into, if you were thinking about it, what the actual Summer Science Programme is like, um, or if you wanted to just see what the life of a Cambridge student is like then again hopefully with all the like pictures and videos etc it's given you a bit of a dip into it thank you